Hi there, I'm Lena Anani, and you're listening to She Wrote a Book, where I interview amazing women from all over the world who also happen to be published authors. I created this show to educate, entertain, and inspire you to be the voice you want to hear in the world. Did you know this episode comes with a free gift? It's a webinar for aspiring authors who want to learn my insider secrets on writing and publishing books. You can access this free training instantly at shewroteabook.com slash bonus. Now let's get started. You are listening to episode number 79 of She Wrote a Book, and today I'm interviewing Wynne Charles, author of the book, I Win, My Journey with Cerebral Palsy Living in a Non-Disabled World. At age 24, she decided to tell her story. Writing this autobiography gave her the opportunity to pay tribute to her family members who are passionate about life and have instilled this passion in her. Her parents have shown extraordinary support. Born with cerebral palsy, Wynn Charles has defied the odds by becoming an author. Her memoir, I Win, is an amazing story of how she remembers her life through the years of having a condition called CP. As a competitor, and has also been a competitor in the Kona Ironman Triathlon. Again, her book is called I Win, My Journey with Cerebral Palsy Living in a Non-Disabled World. You can find the link to purchase her book in our show notes for this episode at shewroteabook.com slash 79. So, Wayne, it's such a pleasure to have you as a guest today. I can't wait to learn more about your book. My first question for you is this. Why did you decide to write and publish this book? Okay, why did I decide to write and publish this book? Well, I did it for two reasons. Um, The main reason being I had two stop and smell the roses moments, one in 06, and as a one in 2010. And at the time of the tragic loss in 2010, which I fully admit in I Come A Win, I just said, okay, there has to be a um, way to get the word out about cerebral palsy, and that's why I... I did. I mean, I um, I wrote my autobiography at age 23, which uh, autobiography number one, autobiography number two will be coming out, um, I guess, in the next two years because um, people just want to know about cerebral palsy and they want to know it via me because cerebral palsy affects um, babies at after birth and could they could get affected by choking on popcorn. They could get affected by wrapping the umbilical cord around their necks. They could get affected um, by premature birth, which happened to me. They could um, have it affect them up to age. I mean, I have a friend who choked on a piece of popcorn. He was born completely normal, and he choked on a piece of popcorn and aspirated on a piece of popcorn. So cerebral palsy is caused by lack of oxygen to the brain, and it's a childhood disability, and no, cerebral palsy can't get worse. It can't get better. It just stays stagnant over time, and I know people that are almost 30 living with cerebral palsy. Wow. Can you tell me a little bit more about your own personal experience, like how how it happened to you? My own, how cerebral palsy happened to me, I was born early. I was born premature, and that's how I acquired cerebral palsy. And so being born premature, like, prevents oxygen going? Yeah. Can prevent oxygen from going to the brain? Okay. I have a um, friend of mine. She got the umbilical cord wrapped around her neck, and she also has cerebral palsy. And so it seems like this hasn't held you back from doing amazing things. And 
Um, can you share a little bit about the stories that you talk about in your book? Uh, which one? There's so many. I mean, there's so many. All well, I'm. <laughs> I'm definitely curious about the triathlon. I'm not going to lie. I want to know about that well, journey. Well, yeah, definitely curious about the triathlon. I knew you were going to mention that one. Um, sure, I'll share a little bit about that one. That one will be actually coming out in a book in the next two years, uh, too. And so all my books are self-published, by the way. And so how I did that is I was paired up with a teammate who happened to be my cousin and how we did the swim, bike, and run was the swim. I was pulled in a boat by um, my teammate and then how we did the bike was I was hooked up to her bike and that's how we did the bike and then the run she would run with me in a wheelchair, a specialized designed wheelchair made for running. That's awesome. Do you have like a website where you have like pictures of your experience? We we do and if you just Google team we win, it should pop up. Awesome. And how awesome is it, like, that that your last name is Wynn? I, I love well, that my, you, you incorporate that as your, in your book title, too. Well, yeah. Stick a lie in front of it, and then you have a book title. But, <laughs> um, so, yes, that was a pretty, a pretty amazing experience. What ended up happening is, unfortunately, we didn't get to finish the Kona Iron Man. But you tried, right? You you did it. Yes, I mean we tried. Yeah, that's that's definitely more than a lot of people can say, especially me. Sure. Um so that's awesome. So what was it like? So you have a chapter in your book called Living with a Disability in a Normal World. Like what what was that like for you? What kind well, of challenges I, and lessons did I you take grew, from it? I I grew up as a able-bodied woman. And when I say I grew up as an able-bodied woman, I was mainstreamed in school. I was integrated. I'm still integrated um, second time going to college with all these able-bodied people. And I was treated as if I had no disability. And how do you think that affected you growing that up? That affected me greatly because I am now a huge champion for people with cerebral palsy and equal rights when um, when I see that they're sticking kids with cerebral palsy and autism in um, segregated classrooms, I mean, they are not mainstreaming the kids anymore. And it's one of my biggest pet peeves because I think these kids need to be integrated with their able bodied classmates to learn how to behave from their able bodied classmates. That's an I I completely agree with that 100%. Um I love I love that you're a champion for that specific cause. That's awesome. You're the perfect example for it as well. And, and but fantastic. the fact of the matter is um teachers don't get their special ed credentials. They barely know what to do when um the child walks in with autism and let alone autism and cerebral palsy, they barely know what to do. What do you think it's going to take for teachers to start um, getting at least some kind of like beginning level special ed training? It's just going to take the willingness to get it. I mean, I know several 
people, only two um, teachers that I had in my, well, maybe more than that, in my um, in my mainstreaming in a private school had their special ed credentials. Why do you think some teachers uh, steer away from special ed training? Because it's filled with the unknown. <laughs> it's filled with the unknown, and it's a hell of a lot of work, and excuse my bad language, but that's how I feel. It's a heck of a lot of work clients get to special ed credentials, and it's filled with the unknown. Awesome. Well, I'm really glad you wrote this book, and uh, my my final question for you is, what do you love most about being an author, among all the other amazing things you're involved well, with? Well, <laughs> I um, I took on another full time job. I took on I took on another full time job on top of my teaching job too. So writing a book, you take on another full time job promoting it, especially when it's self-published or even when it's traditionally published, you take on another full-time job. Absolutely. And and did you enjoy it? Do you enjoy being an author? Do I do I enjoy it? Yes. Do I like the more community aspect? Yes. But how I write books is via Apple's theory. That is hard as heck to get silly to write a book. It is, isn't it? Sometimes she just doesn't understand you or me. It's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that's great. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's... Awesome. Well, well, Wynn, thank you so much for being our special guest today. We will have a link to your book in the show notes for this episode, and our listeners can find that at shewroteabook.com slash 79 to learn more about our author and her motivational book. Thanks again, Wynn. Thank you. Thank you for listening to She Wrote a Book. If you enjoyed this episode, then subscribe now so you can automatically get access to all new episodes. And feel free to share your inspired thoughts with us in the comments, too. I'd love to hear from you. Are you ready to write your own book? Get started now with my quick and concise webinar so you can learn my insider secrets on writing and publishing your own book. Claim your free gift now at SheWroteABook.com slash bonus. Until then, may you always feel good and make magic. Feel good, make magic now. Lena Anani will show you how. Ignite that wisdom inside of you. And show the world what you do. To publish, write, and promote.